Mick. The music cops are non profit making um, rehearsal rooms, recording studio, and equipment hire um, in the centre of Lancaster. There's only three of us running the place. It's Mick, does, Mick's kind of does all the uh, studio stuff, and me and Ian kind of um, do the day to day sort of uh, rehearsal room stuff. It was uh, opened in 1985 by a group of um, ex students. Initially, only supposed to be around for a year, so. Is that right? Yeah, they, they approached the council and um, to find a building. There's loads of empty buildings at the time. A lot of them have been, have been demolished now. This part of Lancaster was turned into a car park in the 1970s uh, to uh, to prepare for a forgotten I by bypass that was never built. So they were there. It's always been a problem with traffic in Lancaster, and they've always been trying to think of ways they can get over it. But so uh, they've had all sorts of plans, but they never came to anything. demolitions were for a link road I think uh, initially which was the 60s thing and so they knocked all these buildings down I guess they were all factories there was a lot of shut down buildings uh, uh, I suppose then in um, in Lancaster that have, I guess have probably been knocked down since but I guess if we hadn't moved in here it probably wouldn't they, this place wouldn't be here anyway they probably knocked it down by now the corp got offered it for a life because they thought the corp's only going to be here a year so it was kind of moving you sort of be caretakers for the building and uh, and then, you know, after a year you'll be gone sort of thing. The brewery shut down about 10 years ago, but it's not changed at all individually, really, since, since sort of the early days. We were surrounded by car parks. Wind swept. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a shame they knocked the buildings down because it was for a development that never happened. We're right in the centre of town, so it's ideal for people who want to walk here. And we're near schools and um, obviously on the bus routes and the train routes. We're surrounded by a lot of venues that people who uh, rehearse here use. They got uh, initial grants from Northwest Arts, which is now the Arts Council, and uh, to build um, three rehearsal rooms, well, two initially and then one extra a couple of years later. and. Um, so, so they built built all this stuff, and uh, yeah, I mean, thirty years later, we're still here. find some old warehouse or somewhere. Well, it was moving from your bedroom, wasn't it, yeah. to, to, to somewhere bigger to play. The Musicians' Cooperative was uh, was created because uh, it was the uh, the old time when people rehearsed in their, uh, the basements or in damp warehouses. We saw it in the garage, but in winter it got a bit cold, didn't it? Mm. So um, you, you at least get about two or three degrees warmer in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 
just plugged in and hope for the best, basically. You tend to find the odd pub that will offer a band, the odd band, a bit of a practice story. for a month or so, and then they get bored yeah, of doing that's always it. Temporary. And then, yeah, and then that's it. But you realise how lucky you are when you go to other places, because we've played, the Sound Assembly, we've played all over the country and abroad as well. And you talk to other people and they have to practice dead quiet in their, in their mate's bedroom or they have to, there just isn't the spaces and the places that they can get cost a fortune. So to be able to come here and do like a dress rehearsal and play really loud you know, is a luxury that a lot of people haven't got. Yeah. Because there just isn't anywhere else that provides the facilities they do? No, that's all. Oh yeah, I'm a bit lost without it. <laughs> Started, it was always about going to the co-op and if you wanted to get into a band you would go to the co-op and if you wanted to know where bands were playing you would go to the co-op so th there was it was always central to what you were doing to get started off and hopefully that's still what it's like for 15 16 year olds starting off now and it still has that vibe that gets you going and keeps you motivated It's like when you're at the, uh, uh, you know, starting level, you need that, you need that affordability. Otherwise, you know, to experiment and stuff. You're, gonna, you're not playing any gigs. You've got no money coming in. You just sort of try to form a band. You know, the idea of the project for us is to, to provide the space and let people sort of, you know, learn themselves, express themselves. <laughs> Places, other towns, you gotta have all the equipment and all yeah, that sort of stuff, which yeah. we could never afford at that time. Yeah. So a lot of bands got off the ground just because all the stuff was here. Not you know not the best stuff, but you just wanted to make a noise. Really, yeah, didn't you? So, and it never really had to be the best. I mean, like, you know, the, the whole kind of vibe around around the club was always kind of like lo-fi indie and rock. You're getting together and making some noise in the beginning, mm -hmm. aren't you? And it's always that you can be loud and have a crack with your mates. facilities we couldn't like both learn each other as sort of people and limitations how to communicate and how to well like craft a sound to, to play live if you like but it's all very well doing little, little sessions in your bedroom but the second you've got a drum kit or you want to bring in a trumpet or an electric guitar or three voices then well you know the neighbours hate it and so does your partner <laughs> How many drummers in Lancaster actually own their own drum kit, or they actually just like come and learn and play at the co-op? Yeah. I mean, if if I had, if if the facility wasn't here, we'd still be setting up because I'd be yeah, yeah. <laughs> unloading my drums. I mean, I think some of the drum kits I've played on there are the worst kits I've ever seen in my life, but they do a job. You said, look, give us six weeks. I'll hire a room in the co-op. Yeah, that was something else. Yeah, I learned, I learned how to play drums. I learned to play drums. And we were all like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Is it that easy? <laughs> space as well if you want to make especially like we play quite loud quite crazy music you can't you can't just do that in your living room or something like that or a garage if you live in a terrace house or even if you don't you know um, especially with a live like acoustic drums just somewhere where you can set up and make as much noise as you need to be able to make you know it's it's really really good the people who practice here end up playing the gigs in Lancaster and around and it helps sort it's like a hub for the scene kind of if you're a band in Lancaster you've practiced in the co-op
studio was kind of my doing. Um, I'd been recording myself and stuff in uh, uh, on cassettes and things, and I finally got around to buying an eight-track tape recorder. Then I heard about this place on the radio, and uh, and, so, and I thought, oh, this is my this is the opportunity, and so I wrote to, a letter to them. Um, this was in the days of letters, um, 1984, I think it probably was, um, and. Uh, uh, and said, uh, how do you fancy having a recording studio? And they seemed to quite like the idea. And so I came along to a meeting, met all of these people, um, and uh, and we had a, a look around the building and decided that the, the room that we're sitting in now and, and uh, another one uh, would be a good kind of location for it. With a bit of help from people, we, we spent about the next year kind of knock it in, into something like uh, the shape of a recording studio and it was it was actually a private business then it was called blueprint it seemed kind of wrong to run a separate business inside the music co-op that wasn't part of the thing as well so they agreed to sort of buy the studio um, and and continue to run it as themselves and then uh, Ian and David both did sort of their own training and, and uh, you know I showed them what I knew at the time and stuff and they both started recording groups and, and the studio kind of carried on like that for a while. We gave the place a bit of a revamp after 30 years um, and uh, ripped off some more of the kind of cladding that was on the walls in the live room and exposed this lovely fireplace. Um, and uh, put some acoustic treatment in, some, some bass traps here, and uh, a wiggly wall, which is a, a little feature, and also uh, uh, an acoustic diffuser makes the, um, the sound more scattered, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, we're going to um, continue to improve this room. Um, there'll be a, an isolation booth. Well, there already is an isolation booth. It'll just be a... A, 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 a less scruffy isolation booth. First it played September In its New Year's Eve The next thing you know She anaerobic go Cut, 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 cut Oh, you're sitting at the year of the hole I said you're looking at the year of the hole oh, oh. The amount of people you meet Just walking up and down these corridors Every week when you come into practice and. Every, anyone that's in any bands around here, they know each other through here. There's never been a better place to go, and it's probably made Lancaster music scenes thrive instead of just die off in a ditch. The, the number of bands has grown um, along with the music co-op. Mm -hmm. You know, as we were saying, it, it, it used to be, you know, I, I remember when the thing started, there just didn't seem to be any bands, and there didn't seem to be very, any interesting bands around. We, ne we now have lots of bands, and we, we think perhaps that the music co-op is, is key to that. Without this place, I imagine the music scene in Lancaster would be very fragmented and there'd be a lot of people, um, for instance, pubs or events um, that rely on having a band, uh, you know, to make things happen, you know, get people into their pub, get their wedding sorted out, etc. Um, and those bands rehearse here, and if they haven't got anywhere to rehearse, they can't develop, and then you'd lose a, a, a side of the market in town. Hundreds of bands around here, loads around Lancaster, loads, and I can only imagine that they all, if not come most of them, here. come through here. At one point or another, you kind of have to. Sort of been in Lancaster or something in a band that all know the call. That's right, all the band in Lancaster practice there. That's at least once or twice at least. But, yeah, it's, for us it's been like a staple of us getting together, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of just that, though. It's, it's, it's on cheesy, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's an essential service. It's an essential service. The Lancaster's, the Lancaster's got a big music scene for, this, for a small town, and it's a completely essential. Without this, it wouldn't exist. Without, without them, place, Lancaster yeah. wouldn't have a scene, basically. It's one of them where it's, it wouldn't yeah. be here without them, wouldn't it? It's 
I'd say this place is crucial to part of the economy of Lancaster and the area. It's kind of just acted as a, a catalyst, I suppose, to for bands. So it's kind of formed more bands, and I think it's it's kind of part of that whole music scene in Lancaster because it's like built itself up. And even though Lancaster is quite a small town city, you know, it's like got a lot a lot of music going on really. Disproportionate amount of music, mm -hmm. considering. When I just found out. The major problem is the, the pending development, which has been going on for like 10 years now. We were looking into getting a uh, sort of a long-term lease with the council. The lease we've got at the moment, which is uh, just a license to occupy, is uh, you're not going to get funding on that sort of security. In their original plan, the, the court wasn't even considered at all, was it? It, it, In, it was just going to be... I think the building was going to be levelled. We got a letter through the door saying they were going to demolish this building, you know. But there was a massive uproar locally um, that the, yeah, that the co-op might disappear and, and it took everybody by surprise a little bit. Yeah. Who, who got involved, was it? Um, English Heritage. English Heritage. They, they came around and looked at all these buildings and they were kind of, sort of surprised, really like the building and stuff and so, <laughs> <laughs> so now, the, the idea is to keep a lot of these buildings. And if, uh, if you knock the music up down, the Grand Theatre falls down as well. Can I somewhere here for yeah, 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 hold yeah, the next yeah, door up? More of a pit. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of waiting for this next stage of the plan. Problem when you're tidying with developers, you know, you're tidying with their time scale, so, which, you know. <laughs> Is ten years has like gone by like that, and they got bus left, right, and centre, don't they? The well, yeah, that development company was bought out by another development company, and, and then you've got to re-meet the the whole team of people who come along and said, "Well, who are you? You know, what what are you all about?" And you got to kind of go through all that again. I mean, the development could take, could be another ten years. It's hard to sort of plan ahead, really. You know, you shell money out and do you know fix this, fix that, and then you get another letter going, you know, tomorrow. Hard to know. It is one of these fantastic buildings which uh, needs constant maintenance, basically. It's just a shame because the roof is so complicated. It, it's continually a problem, of, uh, especially of rain. Water is always a problem in these buildings and they have to be maintained continually uh, to uh, protect the, uh, the structure. But it is amazing that it, that it survived so long. Very few people get to see the uh, the upper floor of this building, but it immediately uh, has an atmosphere of what it was originally for. The first mention of there being a building here, I think, is in 1853, when it when it, there's talk of it being a coach builders. Looking through the directories in the reference library, uh, it goes through various hands as a coach builders until 1902. When well, it's still known as a coach builds actually, but it's become the Lancaster Motor Company. So the, there's a big gap uh, until 1937 in the directories when it becomes a slipper factory. I think it was a slipper factory here till the 1960s uh, when it becomes quite obscure. I used to work here in the late 70s in a glass fibre factory and I seem to remember that uh, it was being used before us by a Nicker Elastic Company, making elastic for underwear and things.
music co-op many, 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 many years ago. And we made ourselves little polythene tents up there because it was so good on cold. And I was often making puppets, props, sets, big backdrops, whatever. So that whole space upstairs, we used to mold it to whatever the job was. We shared this very damp, wet, cold, technically bleak space, but it was our little life and we absolutely loved it. Because I was the younger, smaller girl, whenever there was a leak in the ceiling, it was often my responsibility to be poked up onto the ceiling to mend whichever bit had started leaking. Whoever was first in used to have to empty all of the buckets in the morning or the afternoon, depending what time we turned in. But I had loads of happy years freezing my arse off up there. <laughs> Plans to run up, yeah, and then they all look all very nice. It's just what we're doing now, but souped up a bit, yeah, mm -hmm. souped up and try it. But in fact, the planning application had been accepted mm -hmm. by the council on it, that had all gone through. But when these developers came along, they kind of dangled the carrot and said, Well, look, if you let us develop that whole area, we'll you know, we'll pay for the rebuilding of the co op or rehousing. The council said, Right, well, we're gonna rescind the sort of the uh, lease negotiations and we're going to get this new developer to build you a, a new place as part of this development which never happened kind of 10 years later we're stuck in the same position in the original plans we'd have a venue which would have been 250 capacity. Uh, there'd be a bar up there, there'd be proper access, disabled access. What's funny about the bar? No, sorry, I was going to say that first. Oh yeah, the bar first. We'll we'll the bar first. Be a <laughs> yeah. The studio would have extended right over there, right up to here, in the big live area. More rehearsal rooms, more soundproof rehearsal rooms, because at the moment you can only really have rock bands in here, really, or loud bands, because, well, unless you're in a time when other bands are in, because, you know, the scale of soundproofing is, is sort of minimal at the moment. So if you have proper soundproofing, you can have all sorts of sort of music going on. The other things I've always enjoyed here, I say enjoyed, is sitting in a practice room and you're taking a break and then you hear someone next door playing something and you're like, I yes. Need, I need to be able to play like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I want to be that When we were practicing for sound assembly, we, we had, there was a band across the way that were practicing some covers, and their singer wasn't very good. And we're like, right. <laughs> <laughs> turn it on. Turn the speakers towards them. We'll show you what you do with it. <laughs> Survival of the noisiest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd like it to be all looking like the Palace of Versailles anyway, you know. I think I'd kind of prefer it if it was... Yeah, it's nice more of like, like yes. this. So like home, yeah. away from home sort of thing, you just turn up and do stuff. The building has had some uh, things done to it to make it look better. It's also had some things that have happened to it have made it worse, um, but it's still here. Yeah, I think what's truly really amazing no, is the amount it doesn't change. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is really an invaluable service, so you know, you would hope that they would get some more money to put into the place and uh, and take it on after 30 years, is just, you know, keep it going. It's all a bit ramshackle and uh, no, met, no, falling been... down around our ears, no, but no, hopefully no. we can... Uh, no, yeah. it, needs, it needs money raising for it. It needs to be it needs to be funded, because it'd be a, a sad loss to the town if it was to shut down. I live in Manchester now and there's absolutely nothing like the co-op. Uh, oh. The closest you get somewhere like Islington Mill, but it's funded. It's got, you know, the co-op's put together by hard work and and just dedication and, and spitting it out for it's, it's, it's so the nucleus of the scene, really. We've been going to Lancaster Music uh, Co op for a long time. How um, many years? I think I started off when I was, I don't know, maybe 13, sort of in early terrible cover bands. Yeah, I first went, uh, I suppose, shortly after it opened, it was like 86 or 87. 
Since 1992, I went down to the job centre and said, if you've got any jobs in music, you know, for a laugh. I ended up being here for about a year, so that was my introduction to this place. I worked here, and this is about 23 years ago, 24 years ago. 10 years for me, 10 or 11 years now. It's about like three or four years for me. One evening a week for 20 years of my life in this place. Probably getting on for about 10 years we've been coming here and using, using yeah. co-op. 10 years. I've been going since I was 12 years old. <laughs> Yeah. A couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't survive without all the bands that have used the place. So yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's great that people sort of have used what what we've made, really. By silver waters, there's an ordinary man. He walks across the strand. And then you get these sort of second generations coming in, you know, the people who would come in 30 years ago and now their kids are coming in. So it sort of keeps ticking over and going around. Couldn't say people are coming in. <laughs> yeah. say people are still coming in. <laughs> I mean, hopefully when my kids are old enough to pick up and get on with that, I'll be sending them there to, to make some noise away from my house anyway. I am super, super glad that the co-op is still going after 30 years because if it wasn't, there would be subtle music around Lancaster because, you know, this is where it starts, where it all starts. Without it, I don't know where anyone would go. I don't know, you would have to, you would stroll, you'd see a lot of bands I think would just disappear because, oh, probably, because you wouldn't be able to, or a lot of ideas, projects would just never get developed. They do a great job with, with what little they have and uh, I think we all appreciate it, but we don't say it enough. This guy here, hey, I'm this guy. Hey, hey, hey. He's the guy. It's just kind of like a, a real sacrifice to, you know, run something like this full time all the time all of his evenings you know holidays through the summer through the winter you know um for people to turn up and basically make a lot of noise the whole council attitude and sadly a lot of lancaster attitude is uh, they just simply do not agree with a co-op a co-op and i say bollocks to them i think they're great i'm it's just just keep doing it, keep doing it, and um, kick the city council out of earth when you need to, because everybody's... Thank you for putting up with us. Yeah. For all Happy these years. birthday. Yeah. And please keep doing it, because we need it. I think what the funders and people don't like, and they won't have, is that this can work as a cooperative, and it has been doing for 20, how many years? Yeah. 30. Oh, I... <laughs> In terms of... Uh, fighting against the odds to keep something like this running, you know, they, they, they've developed hero status because, you know, it's not easy, um, you know, they've, they've not run it like a, a, a mercenary business, they've run it like a community um, organisation and uh, to do that without all the money pouring in, if you've got very capitalist and mercenary about it, is, um, requires dedication, so I'd say they were, they were heroes in their own right. Well, I would just say thank you, really. Mm. Amazing, thanks yeah. for keeping going. Because how tireless they've been about this place for so many years is unbelievable, really. And if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have this amazing facility, so hats off to them. Yeah, and, and <laughs> thank you for tolerating <laughs> all our bad music. Oh, God, I you know. must that. listen to hours of it. I mean, I, I do feel like there is a little knowing smile sometimes, you know, when you when you leave. Yeah. A little... <laughs> yeah. yeah. With practice? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> you yeah, think so, do you? Nah, it's, it's, it's all fine, it's all yeah, fine. Yeah. It was good, it was a good practice. Yeah, it was great, it was great, yeah. <laughs>